If you are a child and interested in catechesis of the Good Shepherd, I would like to invite you to come forward to process over there at this moment. I know she's got something planned. She's been asking for things. <laughs> Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen to me. Almighty and everlasting God, who in the Paschal Mystery established the new covenant of reconciliation, grant that all who have been reborn into the fellowship of Christ's body may show forth in their lives what they profess by their faith. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the reading. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed the crowd. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with deeds of power, wonders, and signs that God did through him among you, as you yourselves know, this man handed over to you according to the definite plan and foreknowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of those outside the law. But God raised him up, having freed him from death, because it was impossible for him to be held in its power. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at my right hand, so that I will not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad and my tongue rejoiced. Moreover, my flesh will live in hope, for you will not abandon my soul to Hades, nor let your Holy One experience corruption. You have made known to me the ways of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. Fellow Israelites, I may say to you confidently of our ancestor David that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Since he was a prophet, he knew that God had sworn with an oath to him that he would put one of his descendants on his throne. Foreseeing this, David spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, saying, He was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh experience corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and, all that, and of that all we, all we are witnesses. The word of the Lord. The psalm is Psalm 16, found in your bulletin or on page 599 of the prayer book. We'll read it in unison. 
Protect me, O God, for I take refuge in you. I have said to the Lord, you are my Lord, my good above all other. All my life is upon the godly that are in the land, upon those who are noble among the people. But those who run after other gods shall have their troubles multiplied. Their libations of blood I will not offer, nor take the names of their gods upon my lips. O Lord, you are my portion and my cup. It is you who uphold my lot. My boundaries enclose a pleasant land. Indeed, I have a goodly heritage. I will bless the Lord who gives me counsel. My heart teaches me night after night. I have set the Lord always before me. Because he is at my right hand, I shall not fall. My heart, therefore, is glad, and my spirit rejoices. My body also shall rest in hope. For you will not abandon me to the grave, nor let your holy one see the pit. You will show me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy, and in your right hand are pleasures forevermore. A reading from the first letter of Peter. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you who are being protected by the power of God through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, even if now for a little while while you have to while you have had to suffer various trials, so that the genuineness of your faith, being more precious than gold, that though perishable is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Although you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and rejoice with an indescribable and glorious joy for you are receiving the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. When it was evening, on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. I speak to you in the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Now I have to point out something really interesting about one of the passages this morning. But before I do, I have to set a little groundwork. Okay? Because most of you in here know nothing about cricket, the sport. Right? Okay, so uh, it turns out we're a cricket family now. But um, there's some evidence that cricket has been around since biblical times. Um, now, the way cricket works is you have teams of 11 players, 11 aside. And one of the ways you can be out is by being bold. That's the ball is bold and it gets by the guy with the bat, he misses it, and it hits the stumps. He's bold. He's out bold. Well, in 1 Peter... In some translations, it says, Peter stood with the eleven and was bold. So there's evidence that cricket dates to biblical times. Thank you for laughing. It's only going to come around once every three years. Anyway, okay. Now, uh, I want to tell you, I am by no means what you call a cradle Episcopalian. I sometimes think that that term is not overly helpful. Because it really doesn't say anything about your faith necessarily, or the genuineness of your faith as a follower of Jesus. I personally found my way into the Episcopal Church 13 years ago. And when I was there, I fell in love with several things right from the beginning. I fell in love with the historic liturgy and the worship of the church. I fell in love with the sacraments of the church, the Book of Common Prayer, the Anglican music and hymnody. And I also fell in love with the ability and freedom to ask questions of your faith. That last one, the freedom to ask questions, I think is really important in the church. Now, you might have more commonly encountered it as 
you don't have to check your brains at the door. Have you heard that one? You know where that comes from? That's the top ten reasons for being an Episcopalian by the late Robin Williams. That's number seven. You don't have to check your brains at the door. It's so popular that you might see it on t-shirts. The top ten reasons to be an Episcopalian. Well, we all grow up asking questions. Children ask numerous questions, right? And many of us unfortunately learn that we ask too many questions. I know I did. I asked too many questions. Got my name on the board, check mark, check mark, check mark. Because I asked too many questions. But the scientist side of me, that's what I used to do before this, you could never ask too many questions. Because that's how progress was made, by asking good questions. And I think as a follower of Jesus, I don't think we can ever ask too many questions either. Because the act of asking a question may very well be the act of seeking meaning. It may very well be the act of establishing the genuineness of your faith, to borrow the phrase from Peter. Now Peter was writing to a church that was dealing with anti-Christian prejudice and likely persecution to those early believers of the day. So for Peter, the genuineness of their faith would have been the result of trials that they had faced, real trials, being, quote, tested by fire. But on the second Sunday of Easter, we encounter another example of someone's faith being tested, that of the unfortunately termed Doubting Thomas, right? We find ourselves liturgically on that day some 2,000 plus years since. It says, on Sunday, the first day of the week, a week later than the resurrection of Jesus. That's where we are today in, in our celebration. And according to St. John, Jesus has already appeared to Mary Magdalene early, the day of the resurrection, and then later to the 11 disciples. But Thomas, one of the 12, was not with them when Jesus came that first time. And so the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. Thomas is a bit of a skeptic here. He wants proof. He's free to ask for proof, free to ask for something, free enough to question what has been seen. Thomas wants to establish the genuineness of his faith. And so he proposes this scenario in which he could do so a way in which he would come to believe. He wants to know what exactly it means that the others have seen the Lord. Perhaps like the disciples on the road to Emmaus, Thomas wanted proof that the Lord he sought was not a mere ghost or an angel, but the same Jesus that was crucified, that died and was buried. And so Thomas, he approaches the situation with his reason fully intact. Thomas has, as any good Episcopalian, and in the words of Robin Williams, not checked his brain at the door here. He's looking for something. He wants to establish his faith. Well, Jesus responds to Thomas's freedom to ask by coming again to the 11 disciples, and now Thomas is there for the first time. Jesus offers the peace again. And if you look at this, you see that Jesus must know what Thomas wants. There's no exchange there. But Jesus simply invites Thomas. Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Now, despite Jesus' invitation to do this, what Thomas was looking for, and the numerous paintings and icons which show Thomas placing his finger in Jesus' open wounds, Scripture doesn't say anything about that. All we have is this simple response of faith instead of a thorough examination. I presume it's enough here for Thomas. He just says, my Lord and my God. Thomas is free to ask. He is free to test his faith. He's free to establish the genuineness of faith. And Jesus responds to Thomas with what Thomas needs, actually. Thomas was doing what a reasonable person would do, asking the questions that would strengthen his belief, that would strengthen his faith. He was doing as the former Archbishop of Canterbury, St. Anselm, always sought. And this is a favorite phrase of mine, faith-seeking understanding. It's so important. Faith-seeking understanding. A faith 
that is not blindly believed, but a faith that is tested, a faith that is questioned, a faith that can withstand the tests of the earthly life. A solid faith. As we continue to celebrate the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ during this season of Easter, I encourage you to establish the genuineness of your faith as you would. To use the intellectual capacity that God has given you to ask the hard questions that so many shy away from. To examine your understanding of Jesus. To ask what God has in store for you as a follower of Christ. And for your neighbor as a beloved child of God made in his image. And to be inquisitive as children are in your faith. Like the children that Jesus embraced, right? Never ceasing to exercise your freedom to ask questions of your faith. So in the words of the late Robin Williams, who was an Episcopalian, right? And according to the seeking understanding of Thomas, you don't have to check your brains at the door. May your faith always, always seek understanding and be found genuine. That you may with Thomas, that we all may with Thomas, confidently proclaim to Jesus, my Lord and my God. Amen. I invite you to stand and join in the Nicene Creed, which is found on page 358 in the Book of Common Prayer. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, who through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. And on the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and in his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. <clears throat> With all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above, for the loving kindness of God, and for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For our bishops, Andy, Kay, Jeff, and Hector, for our priest, Justin, and for all the clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our president, Joe, for the leaders of all nations, and for all in civil authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this city, Friendswood, for every city and community, and for those who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For seasonable weather and for an abundance of the fruits of the earth, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. 
for the good earth which God has given us and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For those who travel on land, on water, or in the air, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For the aged and infirm, for the widowed and orphans, and for the sick and the suffering, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have died in the hope of the resurrection, and for all the departed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, and degradation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That we may end our lives in faith and hope, without suffering and without reproach, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. In the communion of saints, let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ our God. To you, O Lord our God. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I give to you, my own peace I leave with you. Regard not our sins, but the faith of your church, and give to us the peace and unity of that heavenly city. For with the Father and the Holy Spirit you live and reign, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. You see that ball there? I know that was a curve. little cool morning right yeah, so beautiful. oh it's cold in here sorry it's hard for me to tell with all this on okay one thing I do want to make sure everyone knows is these lilies need to find a good home after this service okay so um, if that's you then give it a good home we're gonna I think we'll take one and so especially if you donated one for Easter please make sure to take one of those home with you you can plant those and they'll come back every year right I'm not a gardener so I'm told anyway so um, a few announcements, let me get that. If you look at the back of your bulletin, we've got a list of events coming up this week, and there are quite a few. After church today, Daughters of the King will have a meeting, and that is in Shepherd's Hall. I think that's a fairly important meeting for DOK, right? New officers are being elected, right? There's going to be a new president, right? I don't know. As long as somebody steps up for that. Okay, so maybe you'll have that discerned call. That's a Daughter of the King meeting after this. And then this week we have our regular prayer shawl, ministry Tuesday, vestry meeting Tuesday night. Ladies game day is happening this Wednesday. Thursday is a Stephen ministry meeting. There's a lot going on, you guys. We're not going to have that, so just don't do that. We're, we're not doing that. Okay, don't show up then. Don't show up then. Brotherhood TGIF is happening Friday night. And then Saturday is ECW Spring Tea. I can tell you there's a lot of work that's going into this. I know my wife's been a little bit of a part of this. I know Daryl's been a part of this. 
And so you have tickets for sale still, right? Tickets are still for sale. So uh, is someone going to be selling tickets afterwards? Okay, yes. So there will be tickets for sale afterwards to the ECW um, T, Spring T, which is next Saturday at 2 o'clock. I see Peter holding his arm up. I'm sure this is not about the T. Okay, Peter. Say again. Five o'clock, does it not say that here? Four. Five o'clock, Brotherhood TGIF. Okay, so that's at five. Thank you for that correction. We uh, started a new adult Christian formation class this morning, Windows into the Great 50 Days. What, what we're doing is we're looking at four different Easter season icons. We're looking at the scripture references, looking at the symbolism, looking at various facets of different icons of Easter, and that will continue next week at 9.15. One thing that's not on here that I want you all to put on your calendar is April 30th. April 30th is Good Shepherd Sunday. Good Shepherd Sunday is going to be a day that we'll celebrate our birthday as a church. So we're going to have one service at 10.30, and then we're going to have a big picnic, okay? So the main dish is going to be provided, so be looking for something in the voice about a sign-up for side dishes. So we want to have a picnic after 10.30. I think we've got a bounce house booked for kids, not adults, for kids. Um, what else? We've got a snow cone trailer coming. Um, we've got a lot happening, and we want to celebrate the church's birthday in a big way, April 30th, Good Shepherd Sunday. Also, uh, there's some information that's going to come out toward that about some stuff that's come out of some visioning time with the vestry, some exciting stuff for Good Shepherd Episcopal Church. So please make sure you're there April 30th. Okay. Now, are there any birthdays or anniversaries that we can pray for this week? Do you know, I can hardly keep a straight face on that, that passage from Peter now, whenever I hear it. Thanks, Liz. No, just kidding. Let's pray for a birthday. Let's pray. Oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, on your servant Denise as she begins another year. Grant that she may grow in wisdom and grace. Strengthen her trust in your goodness all the days of her life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Happy birthday. And I'm told that it's 65 years. Congratulations. Let's pray. O oh God, you have so consecrated the covenant of marriage that in it is represented the spiritual unity between Christ and his church. Send therefore your blessing upon these your servants that they may so love, honor, and cherish each other in faithfulness and patience, in wisdom and true godliness, that their home may be a haven of blessing and peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Now let us with gladness present the offerings and oblations of our life and labor to the Lord. Oh, I forgot one thing. Hold on. I've got to pray for some prayer shawls. Let me do this real quick. Let's pray. These are prayer shawls that have been made by our prayer shawl ministry, given out to those who are in need, usually uh, those who are suffering with health issues. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for these prayer shawls. We give you thanks especially for those who lovingly make these and craft them. We pray that they would be a source of comfort to those in need and that your blessing would be upon them. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Now let us with gladness present the offerings and oblations of our life and labor to the Lord. In the event that you feel the urge Please feel free to sing on the chorus of this song. Um.
We continue with Eucharistic Prayer A, found on page 361 in the Book of Common Prayer. Is it A or B? Hold on, guys. It's B. 367. I'm still recovering from Holy Week and Easter, I think. <laughs> on that note, I failed to welcome you all, and visitors especially. If you are visiting for the first time and haven't filled out a visitor card in front of you in the pew back, we invite you to do that. And also, we invite everyone to come to coffee and snacks with us in Sterling Hall, across the breezeway and to the right. In Sterling Hall, yes. Good. Prayer B. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death. And by his rising to life again he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant, Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. 
Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. gifts of God for the people of God.
Continuing on page 365 in the Book of Common Prayer, let us pray. You're invited to stand or kneel as you desire. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be God. Alleluia.